to another primary school assembly video. Another one of our videos where we share an amazing Bible story. And one of our team has picked it, their very favourite. Well, I don't know about you, but it's warming up. It finally feels like summer. We've got the Euros, the football championships. We've got Wimbledon coming soon. And there's lots more besides. Well, the exciting thing is, as the summer's here, it's nearly the end of term. Yes! But you're not there yet. You've still got three or four weeks left and you need to hang in there because there's still lots to do at school, I'm sure. I hope you're having a great time. Hope you're enjoying the sunshine, the warm weather, the time outdoors with your mates and hanging out. It's great. Well, today in our assembly, we're finding out another story. And this story, well, there's a bit of drama. There's a bit of excitement. There's a bit of you know those moments, those moments in life when you go, ah! can any of you think of a moment when you get a bit scared, when you get a bit worried and nervous and you just don't think you're going to cope? Can any of you think of a time when you felt like that? I can. Loads of times. Absolutely loads of times. There was a time when I was best man at a wedding and I lost the hat. It was on the roof of a car. The car drove off with me in the car and it blew off over a hedge. And then a farmer brought the hat back, which I was quite pleased about because it cost a lot of money. And I'd rented it and I needed to wear the hat for the wedding and I didn't have my hat. Oh, high drama. It was really one of those days when I was so glad that someone did something to help me. Well, I'm sure your anxious ah moment didn't involve a hat at a wedding. But I'm sure you've had many of them like me. Maybe the time when you lost your money or you lost your friend or you lost your parents or you lost your sweets or you lost your homework. Or maybe a time when everything seemed to be going ah! and you didn't know what you were going to do. There was just too much to do, not enough time, too many pressures are on you and you thought everything was going to fall apart. Well, maybe not fall apart, but you thought it was like the end of the world. I'm sure you've had those moments. I know parents, adults, we have those moments. We really do. You might think, looking at me, I have got life sorted. Everything is perfect. You don't, do you? No, I'm glad you don't because it's not true. Nothing. <laughs> no, nothing is further from the truth. There's lots of times when things can get a little bit hairy and I don't feel I can cope. And I think things are getting a bit tough and a bit scary and a bit like, ah! I wonder what you do when you face with one of those moments. Whether it's eight o'clock in the morning or seven o'clock at night or maybe 12 o'clock in midday. Whenever you face a sort of like, ah! moment, what do you do? Who do you speak to? What do you say? What do you do? Do you run round wildly going, ah! Ah! Hey! Hope not, because that doesn't help. In fact, it makes things worse. It really does. Don't do that. That's a crazy idea. There's always a solution when you get scared or nervous or worried or fearful or doubt or question things. When things get a bit too much, there's always something you can do. Well, enough of me. I just need a few moments now just to calm down because I got a bit overexcited. Enjoy meeting another member of our team, Darren, and I'll see you later after his, his favourite story. Ah, see you later. <laughs> Who are you? Hi, my name is Darren. How long have you lived in Chester? I've lived in Chester since 1996, so that makes it 25 years this year. Tell us about your job. So I have the pleasure of being the team leader at Chester School's Christian Work, so I work really closely with Andy. And uh, a lot of what I do is based in the high schools in Chester. So if you're in year six, do keep your eyes out for me in September, um, uh, it will be great to see you there. Would you rather have nosy neighbours or noisy neighbours? 
I think I'd rather have nosy neighbours than noisy neighbours. You receive an elephant. You can't sell it or give it away. What do you do with it? An elephant. Okay. Well, I would probably have some rides on it and uh, lend it out to my friends and family to also have rides. But I would use its incredible ability to suck up and blow out water uh, to help me win all our family water fights. Um, that's what I would do with an elephant. If you could be famous, what would you like to be famous for? If I could be famous, I guess I would be famous. I'd want to be famous for having the best trained elephant and being undefeated in family, neighborhood, community, and global water fights that me and my elephant would rule the waters. That's what I'd be famous for. What's the best thing for you about being Christian? The best thing for me about being a Christian is knowing and experiencing the incredible, never-ending love of God. Having that constant friendship and companionship with God. Um, and, uh, and also that I'm part of God's bigger picture. I'm part of this, his story to uh, tell and to show others this amazing love that God has for each and every one of us. Tell us a little bit about your favourite Bible story. Okay, so a little bit about my favourite story. It's to do with water. Uh, not an elephant squirting water, but it's to do with a lake. The friends of Jesus were found themselves on a lake in a boat. What is your favourite Bible story? So my favourite story is all about Jesus calming the storm. Thanks, Darren. It was a perfect day. The sun was shining, the sky was blue, not a cloud to be seen, and a small breeze was blowing over the waters of Lake Galilee. By the side of the lake, Jesus was teaching people more about God. God is your father. Look what he does for the flowers. He dresses them in beautiful colours, and the birds have plenty to eat. So why spend your time worrying when you should trust God? He's your father. He's in control. You just need to ask. When Jesus had finished teaching, he was tired. He called some of his friends and they got into a boat. And they started sailing across the lake to where they lived. It didn't take long before the gentle rocking of the waves made Jesus feel even more tired. He started yawning and before long had settled down for a nice sleep. The perfect end to a perfect day. Then one of his friends spotted something in the sky and called to his friend. Look, look, do you see that? What? What is it? Uh, clouds are coming in quite quickly. I reckon we're going to have a storm. Oh, don't worry. We've been on this lake plenty of times. It's not a cloud. What are you talking about? Look, look, they're starting to get really dark. Oh. This is going to be a bad storm. Relax. I don't like this. It's not. It's not going to be a bad storm. Don't worry. Just... We'll be fine, it's going to be okay. But the clouds grew closer, and it started to rain. A strong wind blew across the lake, and the people in the boat soon became cold. The wind whipped the waves up, so the boat started to rock quite violently. Yet through all this, Jesus slept on, unaware what was happening. Still, the storm got worse. The winds blew harder and it started to rain really hard. And the waves got higher and higher. The people in the boat were cold and wet and they started to get very scared. Oh, I told you we were going to have a bad storm. I'm not even going to like this. Oh, I know. You are right. The boat's going to sink. We're all going to drown. I just don't think we're going to make it out of here. I'm getting so scared. Now. You're scared? I'm terrified. What are we going to do? Oh, I know. What? Why don't we ask Jesus? He might have a good idea. Good idea. Jesus, wake up. Wake up. 
So Jesus woke up. He rubbed his eyes and stood up. What's the panic? What? Can't you see? Don't you care? We're all going to drown. Jesus looked at the storm. He looked at his frightened friends. And then very calmly he spoke to the winds. Be calm. As the words left his mouth, the wind died away. He turned to the waves. Be still. And the waves calmed down. The sea was flat and the boat stopped rocking. Jesus turned to his friends. Why were you so frightened? You didn't need to worry. You should trust me. Everything is calm. And so it was. The sky was blue. The sea was calm. It was the perfect end to a perfect day again. amazing story the storm on the lake you might have heard of it before it's when those disciples the disciples were really scared even though they were fishermen and they had spent their lives fishing on that lake they were really scared i mean it was a bit of a notorious lake for the wind and the waves to build up and the storms to come and people were known to be really scared. People were known uh, to lose their ships and capsize and, and worse, lose even their lives. It was one of those lakes, Lake Galilee, where things like that can happen. But Jesus wasn't scared. No, he wasn't scared one bit. He was quite calm. He knew what to do when there was something bad, something scary happening. Yes, he knew what to do. And this verse really helps me and I think it'll help you in fact I know it will help you if you follow its advice it says these words on screen trust in the Lord let's trust him don't lean on what you know follow his ways and he will make your paths straight so trust him trust God don't lean on what you know Remember his ways and he will make your path straight. In other words, if we trust God and don't just rely on what we think will happen or what we can do, but trust God for He what he can do when we're struggling and when we're not sure what to do. He'll help us out and things will work out when we trust him. So how do we do that? How do we do that? You know, what's it look like in practice when you're really worried or nervous well what i do is i say a prayer sometimes if you were with me and i was a bit worried about something or i was a bit nervous or something was happening and i didn't know what to do i will pray and you wouldn't know i was praying because my prayer is in my head it's silent i just say to god silently god help me i'm scared i don't know what to do i trust you even though what I see is all a bit meh, a bit scary, or I don't know what's happening, or I don't know why it's happening like this. I don't know why they've done that, or why that's been said, or why that's been done. I trust God and ask him to help me. So my advice to you is have a go at it this year, this summer, and as year six, as you're heading off into new schools, new chapters of your lives, it's really exciting. I know you're going to have a great time at high school, but you'll need to trust God. You'll need to trust him. It's better to trust him. You could ignore him, but he is there for you. He'll help you. Like always, we just need to trust him. So let's keep trusting and believing that he's there for us because he is. Let me say a prayer for you now. Lord Jesus, thank you that we can trust you and that when we don't know what to do, we know that we can rely on you and you'll help us out and we will get through that time. Lord, help us to trust you in our lives, at school, at home, especially in the new chapter that many of us are facing. In fact, we're all facing as we head on to the next year at school and as year six move on to high school, be with them too. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Darren, for sharing your stories and your favourite Bible story with you, with us, with you, with, over, with everyone, in fact. Get my teeth in today. Yes, it's great to see you again, boys and girls. 
We'll see you next week when we've got a very special video. But I'm not going to spoil it by telling you now. See you later. Bye.